Whatever it is, ask your patrol leader. Mr. Dyer, Mr. Dyer, I, I, I hurt myself. I, I cut myself with my knife. Don't you have your own first aid kit? I might have forgotten to check my first aid kit to see if I have everything. What about your buddy? Ask him. Uh, well, you know, Jimmy, Jimmy did too. Like he, he doesn't have any either. So can you fix it? All right, I'm on. All right, thank you for joining me today on my channel. Now today we're gonna to talk about first aid if you haven't guessed, right? Now, if you are getting ready to start your camping season or if uh, you already started your camping season or maybe some of you just camp all the year around, okay? But, but before you go out in the field, we need to do a very important self check and that is check our first aid kits. And because this is a historic channel, I have a very special thing to talk about today, but we're going to apply it to contemporary because a lot has changed since, well, 1942, when this particular first aid kit was put together. Now, I checked my older catalogs and this exact first aid kit was in my 1936 catalog that was gifted to me by Mr. Denny. So Mr. Denny, Thank you so much, I really appreciate it. And uh, it's gonna be on my website. I'm gonna download the catalog and put it in PDF form on my website, www.honorableoutfitters.com. That way all of you have access to it. Uh, so without further ado, let's take a look at this. When you open it up, you see these lovely contents inside, and it's really neat how uh, together this still is. Like this was not used uh, very much at all. Some of the very, very basic things were used at some point, but other than that, it's pretty well untouched. And in the 1936 catalog, it specifically says that every troop should have some type of first aid squad. Now this strap is definitely made for a child. It is way too small for me to sling on. And um, besides the smallest and skinniest of child, even then, it's not gonna give you a whole lot of stretch. So if we start pulling things out, one of the first things that comes out is white petroleum jelly. And this is in a old school aluminum tube that we see here. And I, you may not be able to see, I'm gonna lay this all out on the table, that way you guys get a very close look. And again, these pictures will also be on my website, www.honorableoutfitters.com. So this is really cool. This is a little bit different from the 1936 kit. The 1936 kit actually came with a Bernalet. Now that's something that was in the older first aid kits that I did a video on. At the end of this, uh, I'll post that particular first aid kit video. It's one of my earliest videos when I was doing this uh, scouting stuff. So that's really interesting. And today they say you should not put petroleum on burns, but it says a soothing dressing for minor burns, cuts, skin irritations, frostbites, and chafing. Of course, it's a great fire starter too. So we pull that out. Let's see what else should we do? What's so many goodies, some nice little tweezers, you know, to pull out those splinters or remove those ticks. Hmm. We've got, this handy dandy thing that says Boy Scouts of America lost. Now this harkens back to the good old days where scouts were actually trained for emergency preparedness and kind of expected to help out in emergencies. That is not the case in today's scouting. Now, 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 those of you who are in today's scouting just like myself, and we still have emergency preparedness merit badge, we still have first aid merit badge, and all these other merit badges, but the old scouts way back when were deliberately trained and encouraged by uh, emergency responders, et cetera, to help out, okay? So that's the big difference. Today, not so much. Sure, scouts are taught first aid, they're taught CPR, you can take the extra merit badges and go emergency preparedness, you can become a lifeguard and all these other things. You can go through wilderness first aid, right? So scouting today does offer those type of things. Those are like above and beyond 
versus kind of the societal expectations of pre-1950s, really pre-1960s, 70s right? So this is a really cool pamphlet because it actually goes through all the different steps on how to do a lost search. And I think that's pretty neat. Uh, and of course, it gives you all the tips and tricks like don't do it at night or avoid searching at night. Moving on. Now we have adhesive tape. This is so cool. This is like the duct tape of the day. And this is like a fabric tape. They don't make this like they, they used to. And it came in this really nice handy dandy little metal tin. But uh, of course, Kephart and I think maybe Nesmic. I know Edward K. Uh, it's been a while since I've read Nesmic. I got to brush up on Nesmic. But Kephart for sure, Edward K. for sure, and several other early 20th century camp craft writers mentioned using adhesive tape in a lot of ways like duct tape. So that's really cool. And then we have one, two, three, woo, four, five, and six, six muslin bandages, non-sterile, two and a half inches by five yards by Acme Cotton, Cotton Products Company, Inc. in New York. So completely unopened bandages. Hey, I want to give a big shout out to my patrons on Patreon because without them, none of this would happen. So if you're one of my patrons, thank you so much for what you're doing for this channel and for all of these people who are watching. Then we pull out this box. I'm not going to open it yet. Have some patience. Here we go. Now we have applicator sticks and there's a dozen of these applicator sticks. You might be wondering, well, what the heck is an applicator stick, Mr. Dyer? Well, they are cotton swabs. That's what they are. They're cotton swabs. Really long and they're actually wood, not paper. So that's kind of neat. So we're going to put that back and we have a handy dandy first aid guide by Johnson and Johnson. <laughs> it's interesting to go through these old school first aid guides. Some of them, uh, I'd say actually most, most of them are comparable to today. Uh, there's a lot of procedures that we don't do today. Medical knowledge, et cetera, has advanced. So whenever you get one of these first aid guides, you definitely want to go through it with a critical eye in mind because a lot has changed as far as our understanding. But this is kind of cool, because the scout, you might get a little nervous, you might forget, I don't know. So there you go, you can reach out and grab that. And then we have sterile gauze pads. One, two, three, four, five sterile gauze pads. And it came with two dozen safety pins, you know, for the muslin bandages. So that's pretty neat. And we got, what is this one? Sterilized God's bandage, one inch by 10 yards. We have two little boxes of these. And I think I found some more safety pins. Yes, more safety pins. And over here in this side, we have a pair of scissors. And these are actually really nice scissors. They look kind of chintzy, um, but they're pretty daggone sharp. They're really good. And you can see right there, all the different compartments. This is a nice little bag, you know, a patrol size bag. Now there's a lot of stuff that's kind of missing in here compared to the personal first aid kit. Now remember, every scout was supposed to have their own personal first aid kit. So this is more or less just a supplement and really give you more. Like this is five yards of bandage, five yards. So this is, uh, more rapid response, put it that way. Like I, I can't think of another way, but this is really just to, uh, if you've got a fracture or broken bone or a lot of blood somewhere, then this, this gives you the extra supplies that you may need that your personal first aid kit would not give you. And we got this handy dandy wax box. This is like military grade waxed hardwood. First thing, pull out water purification tablets. This is exactly the same type of water purification tablets that you can get at your local big box store with the same instructions, except, except it says, shakes thoroughly so that a little water leaks out and disinfects 
the screw cap on your canteen. That's pretty neat, right? Like that's not on the modern stuff. Then we have ammonia aromatic. And we can actually open this. And it still is very aromatic, but it doesn't smell like ammonia. It's more, um, I don't know, perfumey. It's, it's kind of interesting, but it definitely burns the nose. So that's pretty cool if you got that fainty person. And ammonia, of course, is also a disinfectant. And then we have good old Miracrome. Now, if you're part of the older population who watch my channel, Miracrome may be extremely familiar to you and burn inside your memory. This is really cool. I got a couple little bottles of this one. This one, like, has been untouched and it's got a little dauber inside so you can put it on whatever cut that you may have. I've heard lots of good stories about Miracro and I vaguely, vaguely remember it being used on me in the very early 90s. And my folks, they're, they were born in 48 and 49. So yeah, they had that stuff kind of laying around. So this, this, is, uh, this is what we got. I'm gonna move the can real quick so you can see up close and I'll point out the different things. And then we're gonna talk about contemporary first aid kits. Here is the loss package and show you the petroleum too with the plastic cap. And just like all these, as time goes on, they start kind of leaking, they break. Uh, it starts breaking down. So that's cool. A little aluminum tube right there with the petroleum and the instructions. We got the applicator sticks. See the Johnson Johnson logo with the sticks there. The first aid guide. See how fine those tweezers are. Like that is really, really tiny. You can see the nice ridges. That's pretty cool. I like that. Like they did not have to do that. That's old school machining right there. Quality, and even some of the most basic things. The ammonia aromatic. And you see the little tablets. Now, you won't really want to see how tiny these tablets are. There you go. There they are. And the Murachrome. See the banners? I have not opened up any of these. I don't plan on it, but you know, it's muslin. You can go to Joanne Fabrics or Michaels or somewhere else and get muslin. And we have the adhesive tape. Now this, this is kind of cool. I'll pull this out because to see the texture of this tape, if you, uh, you know, are a little bit younger like myself, this might blow your mind a little bit. That's actual fabric, fabric tape. That is the duct tape of the old timers. And then we have sterilized gauze. And I think one of these might be open. Yep. So this one was opened already. I didn't do it. So I take this out carefully so someone in the next hundred years can see. So there is the gauze. It's not sterile anymore, obviously, right? But old school gauze. And everybody's seen safety pins before. And these type of little pads. That's it. Take a look at this, this box though. That, that box is pretty cool with the dividers. You got one, two, three, four, five dividers. And you got some larger compartments where everything fits. Now let's talk about modern patrol kits. Now, this is what I take with my troop on a larger patrol. And this is actually pretty comprehensive. I have another one that's a little bit bigger and it contains a few more stuff for when we go on summer camps, but for weekends, um, where it's just like two days, this is what I generally take. And then I have a couple examples, of my personal first aid kit and one that you can get at your big box store. So let's go ahead and open up this first. 
Now, when it comes to first aid, you really have to plan for whatever area you live in, of course, what you're doing. You can't just pack a first aid kit and that's like a, an ultimate first aid kit, right? Now, you can try to account for every accountability, but really got to focus on the main things. You know, where are you, how far are you going to travel? Are you going to do a lot of hiking? Are you going to be stationary? Are you going swimming? Are you going in snake country? Are you going in rocky country? Like, are you likely going to possibly sprain an ankle? Uh, all these other things, right? So we try to accommodate our first aid kits for whatever area we are in, in whatever situation that we're probably going to be in. And of course you can get some pretty intense trainings out there like wilderness first aid, which if you're really gonna go out and do some pretty extensive uh, outdoor adventure, then wilderness first aid should be at the top of your list. Lots of places will train you for it. Now, every first aid kit that I take, I always have some moleskin. You know, you can get a package of it, it's pretty cheap, but moleskin, if you got blisters or something, nothing's gonna ruin your day like blisters. So having some moleskin available is gonna help you a lot. And I have a rescue breather. Now today's first aid, oftentimes, I think first, what is it, Red Cross? CPR doesn't even teach you to do the breathing technique anymore. It's all chest compressions. So you want to make sure you get the train that you need for that. But for CPR, go old school. I got my rescue breather. And then we have two packages of gauze bandage, which there we go, gauze bandage. And we have a triangular bandage with safety pins, you know, so you can cover it around your arm or put it around your head or something like that, make a sling. So having a triangular bandage is actually really useful. Of course, you could always use your old school Boy Scout neckerchief, which is why those things were so big. 150 uses for a uh, Boy Scout neckerchief. And then we have a splinter first aid kit, which is pretty handy. This has forceps, adhesive bandage, and antiseptic wipe. All in that little kit, it's pretty cool. And this is, well, you could probably read, this is a North first aid kit. And then we have biohazard bags, you know, just in case there's a lot of blood or something. And I tend to carry pre-contact towelettes, just in case for those kids who are especially susceptible to poison ivy, poison oak, things like that. I really don't catch it. I'm one of the few people who are pretty fortunate about it. Now, of course, if you already have it, then that's not going to do a whole lot of good. Um, but you could bandage it that way. You know, you're not going to itch it and scratch it. And we have some gloves. We have iodine wipes, which you know, today's medicine goes back and forth on iodine. And then antibiotic. We have an instant cold pack. And we have sting wipes. Seuss pain of insect bites and stings. That's really important if you got a kid that you know, especially with wasps or hornets and things like that. Not so much for mosquitoes. We're talking about bee stings, wasp stings, hornet stings, and that's really good. And eye wash. And that's what's in this. So it's pretty comprehensive. You can do a lot with a kit like this. And what's nice is they're kind of pre-packaged for what they uh, what they specialize in. So I like it. I like this a lot. One of my favorite first aid kits. The only thing I really had to add to it was the uh, uh, mole skin and the uh, poison oak, poison ivy wipes. That's it. So let's put that to the side. Now let's talk about personal first aid kits. I'm not going to go through and show you everything in this. This is what I got from one of the big box stores, but it comes with 24 antibacterial shear bandages, 24 antibacterial shear bandages that are a little bit larger, it has butterfly band-aids, antibacterial fabric bandages, and it has alcohol prep pads, antiseptic wipes, triple antibiotic ointments. It comes with gloves, finger splints, paper tape, single-use instant cold pack, first aid guide. It's pretty nice, right? Kind of like the old school one. And gauze pads, non-stick pads, gauze pads that are a little bit larger. One, first one is two by two, this one, the larger ones are four by four, and a carrying case. So this is pretty comprehensive, but honestly, I, you, you're not gonna go through a lot of band-aids unless your kid really doesn't know how to handle a knife or something. 
Um, so for your personal first aid kit, this is what I take with me for my personal first aid kit. And it's never let me down. Of course, I got moleskin because I wear glasses. I have a glasses first aid kit. I have a little itty bitty tin with various medicines that I need or use. I have uh, some more pain medication, good old medical tape. Still can be the duct tape of the time. Carry a little flashlight, tweezers. Now this little tweezers also has a little light, which is really useful, especially if you got eyes like mine. And I have diaper cream. Don't laugh. If you know, you know. And if you don't know, well, that's awesome. I, I, I'm jealous, but if you've ever been in the summer and you got some heat rash, having some diaper cream, it'll save you. Same thing with body powder. Uh, a little tube of antibiotic ointment. Got a couple basic band-aids. I have some Q-tips and larger gauze bandages. Oh, and, and a couple tiny ones, you know, really, really tiny band-aids. That's it. That's, that's my personal first aid kit. And I got it in like one of those little locking plastic containers so it's waterproof. Even if I go in the water and I drop this, it'll probably float or I can retrieve it. And uh, this will be good, useful. So that's my first aid kit. Personalized to my own use. All right, well, I got to put this back way later. Now, what would I add to this particular one that the, uh, you know, the, these other ones have? Really? The only thing I would add to this, because it already comes with antibiotic ointments and stuff, historically, I would find something like moleskin to add to it, and maybe some type of ointment for uh, rashes, which this doesn't even have that, right? Those of us who are outdoors in the woods will have some very specific needs that the average person who's just driving back and forth to work or might get a boo-boo uh, playing outside in their backyard, those of us who are outdoors may need some more specialized things. Okay, so consider that when you're creating your own first aid kit. Now, if you have your own medical needs, like my glasses, you know, you got to take that into consideration. All right. Now, before we go, just want to let you know, check in my description box below because it has all the different links, especially all my favorite items. Don't forget to check my website. And if you want to sign up for my new monthly newsletter, you know, the links down below. And don't forget to check out my new podcast. I just posted a new one, which is interesting how the sound on the podcast sounds uh, more like radio than what this microphone does. But this is a great microphone, right, for this kind of situation. But if you want to hear my radio voice, check out my podcast. All right. If you're interested in my first aid video, check this one out here. If you want to check out my playlist of my inspirational talks, that's over here. I hope you guys have a wonderful week. Give a kiss on your loved ones, and I'll see you guys next time. Take care.